Hello, let's try that again. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, today, uh, I'm going uh, somewhere a little different than I usually do on my streams uh, for Late to the Party, uh, where I pick, um, in Late to the Party, I pick games that I'm not very familiar with. Either I haven't played before, or I played a very long time ago, or I gave up on, and give them a really good shot. Uh, play them for an hour. I write about them for my uh, newsletter, Astrolabe, which you can see uh, right above me there. It's a free newsletter. I cover gaming, science fiction, fantasy, writing, all sorts of uh, fun things like that. <clears throat> Today, I'm kicking off the uh, the first in a new series of streams where I play Chrono Trigger. Anybody who's followed me for any period of time on Twitter uh, or followed my games writing knows that I'm a huge, huge fan of Chrono Trigger. It um, It's hugely influential, influential <clears throat> to me. Uh, as a gamer, but also as a writer, as a journalist. Um, and I have spent a lot of time in 2020 digging into Chrono Trigger when I worked on a, a piece called Timeless, A History of Chrono Trigger, which I um, posted on Medium last year. It's a huge 10,000 word history of Chrono Trigger. It goes into the game, the game's history and impact. It tells the story of the people who made Chrono Trigger, how it all came together. And um, working on that piece just reinvigorated my love for Chrono Trigger. And so I thought it would be fun to do a, a streaming series where I play through my favorite game. Um, hopefully I can, um, you know, show you why I appreciate it so much. Hopefully we can have fun just playing through um, together. And if you're not familiar with the game, um, hopefully you kind of get an idea of what it means to, um, to have a game like Chrono Trigger and what it meant to the genre and why it means so much to so many people. Um, today I'm going to kick off with our first session. I have a totally stocked new game plus save that I'm going to be using, um, for a new game plus run. This is going to speed things up a lot. New game plus runs usually take me about nine to 10 hours. So we're probably looking at, you know, nine, 10, 11 sessions to get through, uh, to get through the game. Um, I did not create this game save. I found it online. Um, it has maxed, maxed out characters, tons of items and stuff like that. So that's going to allow us just to focus on the adventure aspects of um, Chrono Trigger, which I think are some of the most interesting elements of the game. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started here. So I assume a lot of people viewing right now are probably uh, familiar with Chrono Trigger. If they haven't played it, they at least kind of know what it means um, for games history, the history of Japanese RPGs. But um, for those that might not, uh, Chrono Trigger was sort of the end cap for uh, game developer and publisher Square Enix on the Super Nintendo. And so what happened is it assembled a dream team of game creators to create something um, that culminated everything that started on the original Nintendo with Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest and then evolved over time on the Super Nintendo to become something even greater. And so the Dream Team consisted of the creator of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi, and the creator of Dragon Quest, Yuji Horii, along with uh, Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama and a few others. Um, and they got together to make a game that kind of brought together the best of Final Fantasy with the best of Dragon Quest. And uh, it worked. Needless to say, it uh, it worked. And um, and so let's kick things off. So you can see here, I have just a totally stacked um, save game, maxed out time, maxed out money, maxed out number of saves, maxed out uh, stats. Uh, so I'm going to go into this game um, very overpowered. Um, for anyone unfamiliar, again, with Chrono Trigger, one of the things that it introduced to the Japanese RPG genre and just gaming as a whole is the concept of the New Game Plus. And that is, it's a system that allows you to, once you've beaten the game once and got the ending, you could start the game over with a New Game Plus, but using your characters and items, statistics uh, that you had accrued the first time around. So you go into the game, super powerful. Um, and one thing that I talk about in Timeless, the history of Chrono Trigger, is that New Game Plus in Chrono Trigger is really interesting to me because the first time around, it, it has a lot of the traditional kind of RPG trappings. You have levels, you're gaining new skills, equipping new, uh, stronger equipment, um, as you kind of get deeper and deeper into the game. The second time around, however, you, you have all of that. You're, 
you start the game strong enough to beat the end boss uh, with no problem. And so that frees you up to really focus on the narrative, the adventurous elements, the exploring the world, the various stories and characters. And it almost becomes not really a Japanese RPG anymore. It becomes almost like an adventure game. And, and that's something that I've really loved about Chrono Trigger. And I think why I keep going back to it time and time and time again is because I can, you know, start a fresh brand new save and it gives me a really satisfying uh, traditional Japanese RPG uh, experience, but I can also go into it in a new game plus and find a really snappy, fun kind of sci-fi fantasy adventure um, adventure game, almost like a almost like a graphic novel in a way, in that you're so focused on the story and the world and the exploration, uh, and that's really cool. Just two very different um, experiences wrapped up into one. So here we're kicking things off. Um, I'm going to stick with just the regular names for the characters because I'm like that. I uh, I used to rename them uh, way back in the day, but I've, I've just gotten into the habit of of always liking the you know uh, official uh, names for characters. So uh, here we go. Uh, good morning, Chrono. This is of course one of the great openings to Japanese RPGs. Um, you have our hero Chrono uh, sleeping in, still living upstairs at his mom's house. Um, getting woken up it's just so sort of quaint and naive and and innocent um compared to like you know where the genre has kind of gone forward um and i really think that it helps set the stage for a world that you care about because chrono has this kind of grounded life um this idyllic life um but i'll talk about that uh later on all right here we go so as um, as the game kicks off, we um, we find out that the Millennial Fair is going on. I don't think it ever really signifies what it's celebrating a thousand years of. Um, there's a kingdom and a king, so presumably the first uh, king of Guardia, I guess. But it never really makes that clear. Um, there's uh, later on in the game. There's like a dark wizard named Magus, and you defeat him. But that's 400 years ago, so um, that's not what they're celebrating with the Millennial Fair. All right, my uh, my main girl Luca. I um, I've played through Chrono Trigger so many times. I've used every variation of party um, that you can possibly use. Um, and while it's not the not the strongest, I think my favorite party is just the canonical uh, canonical party of uh, Chrono, Luca, and uh, and Marl. Um, there's just that they're a nice, really rounded party. They fall into the traditional kind of, you know, strong main character with good physical attacks, a black mage in Luca and a white mage in, uh, in Marl. And, um, just narratively as well, they're the three that kind of start off the, um, start off the story and are sort of like most directly engaged in all of the different narrative beats. So, uh, here we go. We've just run into, um... Marl, who at this point, we don't know who she is. We don't know what her secret identity is, but that of course um, comes up quite quite quickly. Um, you know, right off the bat, uh, one of the cool things about Chrono Trigger is that there's, you know, there are various ways of doing different things, various outcomes to, to storylines. It's not super complex. We're not talking Radiant Historia. We're not talking, uh, you know, visual novels, but, um, Without even knowing it, the first kind of tendrils of that type of storytelling is um is coming up right now as I'm um as I've bumped into tomorrow, um, and that of course comes up later uh, in the court scene. So what I'm doing right now is, you know, after I got knocked over by Marl, I um, could go get the pendant first, or I could talk to Marl first. And by talking to Marl first um, and giving her back her pendant without fighting, you know, I set this um, precedent. Um, by which I'm judged later on in the game, um, which is kind of fun. So again, like trying not to be, you know, um, too assertive. So when Marl is is asking me if if she can walk around with me, Chrono's like, nah, nah, nah. I got I got my own thing going on. Um, but eventually we relent. Oh, there's okay. Here we go. There's one thing um, I've forgotten to do, which I do every time I play Chrono Trigger, which is um, 
that's not it. Uh, change my window color to the green one because I like it. Uh, set my battle speed up uh, nice and high. And now we'll go equip. Um, I go back and forth on using the prism specs and um, just a, a gold stud on Chrono. Uh, obviously, the prism specs allow him to do some, some pretty serious damage, but um, in New Game Plus runs, I also do just like being able to um, use the silver stud, which cuts MP use by 75%, and just use Luminaire everywhere I go. Um, I've always felt like that's a pretty effective way of... Um, Pretty effective way of getting through the game pretty quick. Um, the gold stud is is pretty bananas in terms of um, how much it kind of opens up your ability to abuse magic in um, in this game. I'm um, I should say I'm not a speedrunner by any um, by any stretch of the imagination. I think uh, speedrunners can get through this game, uh, not new game plus, in about five and a half hours. I'm looking at about nine and a half uh, in a new game plus, um, but I do know the game pretty well, um, so I'll be kind of moving through some some parts pretty quick. Uh, I certainly won't be using, you know, I don't know ideal battle strategy. I don't know, you know, the nitty gritty of the systems and and the math behind combat and all that. So, um, you know, you, we are going to get to some points where I'm probably not doing th things as efficiently as um, as I could be, certainly, but um, but I do know the game pretty well. Now that I've said that, there's going to be some moment that I forget uh, where to go next or um, or what to do, and I will uh, I will feel uh, adequate shame during those moments. So that's what we're looking for. Lucas' device is all set up. Um, after you pick up Marl, you do have to wander around the fair a little bit, talking to people, um, until the device is all set up. Um, this is one more thing that I want to do. No thanks. Um, by the way, could you talk that young lady into selling her pendant? This is another instance where I'm trying to set, um, you know, set some flags so that at the trial I don't get a guilty verdict. So for everybody in chat, um, I'd love to hear about, if you're familiar with Chrono Trigger, I'd love to hear about your experience. Did you play it originally, like way back when on the Super Nintendo? Is it something you discovered through the Nintendo DS remake, through emulation? Um, what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences with the game? I, um, okay, here we go. So this is Luca's um, invention. This is where the plot really sort of gets kicked off in a moment. Um, I got Chrono Trigger way, way, way back when uh, for my birthday. And I remember uh, ogling video game magazines for months and months and months, uh, you know, reading previews of the game as it was being developed, released in Japan. Um, it came out a few months before I got it, uh, but I still remember, um, you know, going to the mall with, uh, with my dad, getting my, my copy finally, and just sitting in the back of the car, you, you know, the streetlights sort of strobing as you drove under each one uh reading the, the big instruction manual um with each flash of the light and that memory kind of really has stuck with me um for a long time the one thing i only discovered sort of recently is uh probably i think with the ds remake is normally at this stage um they're looking for a volunteer and if i go talk to Marl, it kind of kicks off the next story beat uh, I didn't realize that I could actually teleport by going up onto the platform. And that's only something I discovered after, you know, having probably beaten the game, you know, at least a dozen times uh, with full playthroughs. And so it can be kind of fun, um, you know, testing this out uh, a couple of times. I still get a kick out of that. Uh, on the right telepod platform, you'll see a little glowing star. Um, that appears on New Game Plus run-throughs. And if I click on that, you can, I would be taken right to the final battle. Um, and so that's a way to kind of challenge yourself 
Uh, you also get a special ending that way. Um, what's really fun is if I do this right now before talking tomorrow, I can actually face off against the uh, final boss of the game with just Chrono. Um, and beating Lavos with just Chrono has always been sort of one of my uh, kind of peak accomplishments, personal accomplishments as a gamer. Um, it's not really that hard to do, but, um, you know, as a kid, there was, you know, so much pride in the fact that I got to, uh, you know, through my favorite game and I got to the last boss with just the main character and, and won. Um, and that's always uh, really fun. But now Marl's going to try out the telepod and, um, you know, as, uh, as we can expect, things probably, uh, probably won't go, uh, so great. The music's changed, always ominous. Um, okay, yeah, uh, Lopside Down, that's, that's a really cool story. So you're saying your older brother borrowed Chrono Trigger from a fan, uh, from a friend back in elementary school and you watched him play through it and that's how you experienced uh, JRPGs as a kid. Um, hey, free, and you got a free copy of Chrono Trigger in the end. That's, uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, what really stands out to me about that is that that was the same relationship me and my youngest brother had. Um, I was the older brother in that case, um, but we would hang out for hours and hours and hours. Uh, he was six years, he is six years younger than me. Um, so he was, you know, I would have been 14, he would have been eight. Uh, we would hang out for hours and hours and hours as I would play through uh, Japanese RPGs, and he would um, and he would watch, and that was how he experienced Japanese RPGs for the first time until he got a little bit older, and um, eventually, with I think Final Fantasy VIII was the first um, JRPG that he really got into and played and beat on his own, and um, and that memory like has of gaming with them like that has always stuck with me and it's always kind of kept us close and brought us um, closer together. Um, and so that's cool. It's cool to see and meet somebody else with um, a similar shared experience. All right, here we go. Uh, so Chrono is um, going after Marl now. She's disappeared into this um, teleporter. She left her necklace behind, uh, her pendant. Uh, and Chrono is, uh, you know, he doesn't have much to lose. He's just loafing around at home with his mom, uh, working out at the gym. Uh, so he's, you know, he's, he's putting himself forward. Um, which also, of course, kind of um, foreshadows the big twist in the game in which Chrono um, makes another sacrifice and um, puts himself in harm's way to, uh, to try to save his friends and the world. Um, which is kind of cool. Chrono, of course, is, um, as you've probably noticed at this point, a silent protagonist. Um, one of the things that I think is unique about Chrono Trigger is that um, Chrono doesn't really drive forward the plot at all, except for this one, you know, the moment midway through the game uh, during the big plot twist. Um, you know, he's he's uh, he has a lot of agency now as he as he ta makes a decision to go into the time portal, but um, it's actually his um, his companions that make most of the kind of plot driving um, decisions and uh, and stuff going forward. Marl in particular is is the one that really kind of kicks things off um, about an hour into the game. So um, this is our first official combat in the game. We went and fought Datto for some silver points uh, just for fun, uh, but this is the first time you actually get into a battle in the game. And it went very quickly. And now we are about to witness Chrono Trigger's single flaw. There's only one, and it is this battle right here. You travel back and forth through the canyon uh, many times during the beginning of the game, and this battle is um, more or less unavoidable. I think speedrunners have a way of get, getting around it, uh, but you need sort of pixel perfect timing um, to exploit. Um, to exploit the game, to get past it. Uh, so you fight that battle many, many times, uh, especially throughout a regular game, and it just gets tiring, especially because you're you're forced to go through Truce Canyon um, so many times. Uh, so here we are. We uh, are in a new version of the world, and it looks very similar to uh, the version we, we lived in and came from, but, um, but obviously different. Um, and so Chrono uh, is feeling lost, and um, he's asking, uh, you know, where am I? What's going on here? 
And so part of the mystery at this point um, is figuring out, you know, like where um, where are we? Where is Marl gone? What what's going on? Um, and Chrono Trigger moves very quickly, uh, and these questions get answered quite quickly as well, uh, which is one of the things that I really love about Chrono Trigger. Um, it doesn't waste time on anything. Um, okay, so Queen Lean, uh, looking very familiar, comes, uh, comes to the rescue and she seems to know Chrono, which, uh, which is fun. Okay, so the Queen's letting us into the castle. Um, and wants us to uh, uh, follow her. So the <clears throat> the King, referring to us as Sir, is is quite a mood. Um, Lean's acting odd. So that's our first little story beat, giving us a hint about uh, about what's coming up. So if I had spent more time um, chatting to people in the inn um, or around town, I would have found out that Queen Lean had disappeared, but was recently found um, in Truce Canyon. Um, and so the Kingdom of Guardia called off the search because they thought they had found her. Um, naturally, however, we um, we know that that's probably not what uh, what's really going on. Because uh, the queen that they found was actually Marl. They all think she's Queen Lean. Uh, strong genetics uh, run through the family, I guess. Well, we're moving through kind of this story scene. I just want to show you what I have up here, which is I talked about going to the store, getting. Uh, the mall getting my original copy of Chrono Trigger, and this is it right here. Um, still have the box, still have the cart. Um, I recently lost my save states, or my save games, um, uh, about a year ago, I guess. Um, I was playing the original cart on my Super Nintendo, my uh, original Super Nintendo, and as I was moving around, I sort of nudged the Super Nintendo with my foot, and um, the screen turned black. The music was still going, but the screen turned black. Um, and so I hit reset and, uh, my save game was gone. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer. I found out later that if that happens, if you hit, um, you know, if you do nudge your, your console and your game freezes like that, what you need to do is power off. Um, and if you switch the power off instead of resetting, um, you can potentially save your game again. But the act of resetting after it locked up like that is what, um, is what wiped out my save, uh, which was which was sad. Um, what was interesting is it only knocked out one of my save games, uh, so I did have another one that was you know part way through the game, um, hadn't hadn't beaten the game yet, um, so it wasn't it's not that useful for a new game plus, but, uh, but yeah, I had a kind of funny anecdote back when I was. Um, a teenager, we were all playing Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy III at the time, um, and I was near the end. I think I was at uh, I was at the final save in, in Kafka's Castle, um, and I was at a friend's house, and we had my copy, and uh, it was upstairs in one of the bedrooms in the Super Nintendo, and. Um, one of my other friends was due up to, to play it after me. And he was up there kind of playing, I think on, you know, he had started his own save game uh, while we were there because he was really excited to be able to play it. Um, and I was downstairs just hanging out and then he comes down and he's like, oh, I'm really sorry, Aiden, but like I kicked the Super Nintendo and now your save's gone. And I was like, really? Like, really? <laughs> you kicked it and just my save got deleted? Uh, that's very convenient. Um, and I kind of believed this for literally two decades, um, figuring that he had erased my save game so that he could bring the cart home that day. 
Uh, it wasn't very fair of me, but um, but it was only when I had this incident nudging my Super Nintendo uh, a year ago, erasing one single save game, that I realized that he was actually being honest with me. Uh, and so that kind of rewrote uh, rewrote history, and I've, uh, I've moved on uh, and forgiven him uh, for the sin he didn't commit. So anyway, moral of the story: be careful with your um, with your Super Nintendo games. <clears throat> so, um, Marl has disappeared. Um, there's a um, a time paradox. Uh, this is really the only time in the game where a time paradox uh, comes up as a plot device. But basically, the idea is is that Marl showed up in Truce Canyon um, and was found instead of. The real queen lean and so they called off the search but the real queen lean who had been kidnapped is still kidnapped so if she's been kidnapped then marl can never be born so if marl can never be born she can never go back in time to save queen lean so um chrono and luca now are off trying to search for queen lean um, as you can see, like Luca is level 99. She has maxed out um, stats. Um, but because she doesn't have a good weapon on, she still wasn't even able to one-shot enemies from the beginning of the game, uh, which is interesting and goes to show how much equipment um, powers you up in Chrono Trigger. Um, Luca's physical attack is, is never, uh, never great to begin with. Uh, she's a black mage, but... Uh, but it is kind of interesting to see a maxed out character struggling to one shot um, a regular enemy in the first dungeon in the game. Uh, so this is Frog, who's uh, a fan favorite. I've always been a little lukewarm on Frog. Um, he's a little, uh, a little overwrought to me. A little, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think he could loosen up a little bit, uh, but uh, but he's still he's still a good guy, and I do like his story about um, kind of self sacrifice and, and self confidence and um, and kind of finding his strength eventually. Um, so I'm gonna do put a gold stud on uh, Luca as well as Marl. Uh, I don't have another weapon for Frog. Um, Frog, I'm gonna pop the sunshades on, I think. Alright. This cathedral's always been one of my favorite, um... Dungeons in a Super Nintendo RPG, uh, Japanese RPG. I just think it's really tightly designed. Um, it's really, you know, atypical for a first starting dungeon in that it, you know, it's a real building. It's modeled after what a real, you know, cathedral might be uh, laid out like. Um, it has nooks and crannies. It's got fun little secrets. Um, and that all of that just to me adds up to something that's kind of interesting um and unique in the genre um so i always have fun going through it um plus the music is just fantastic um of course you know the music in chrono trigger is uh is well regarded um and by many considered you know one of the best if not the best soundtrack ever um the composer yasunori mitsuda was uh Remarkably, he was in his early 20s um, when he uh, when he worked on Chrono Trigger. He's only 48 right now, maybe maybe 49. Uh, and Chrono Trigger came out 25 years ago or whenever that was. So he would have been in his early 20s um, working on this. And I just like, you know, when I think back to what I was doing in my early 20s, um, it, it certainly wasn't, you know, crafting uh, work as kind of remarkable as as what Mitsuda uh, accomplished in his 20s especially when you then consider that just a few years later he went on to uh to compose um Chrono Cross the sequel which um in my opinion has you know a top uh I don't think it's a the number one um 
which might sound sacrilegious. Um, I think Nier, um, the original uh, version of Nier on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 has the best soundtrack of all time. But um, Chrono Cross is, uh, is right there at number two. And again, Mitsuda would have been in his mid-20s when he composed it, um, which is just remarkable to me. Um, unfortunately for Mitsuda, he uh, famously put himself in the hospital from overworking um, on Chrono Trigger. Um, he was a, a sound engineer before this, and he took on Chrono Trigger basically because he, you know, he walked into, uh, I guess, Sakaguchi's office and said, if I don't get to do a game, uh, I'm going to quit. If I don't get to compose a game, I'm going to quit. And Mitsuda, or uh, Sakaguchi, I think it was Sakaguchi, said, uh, okay, fine, you can do Chrono Trigger. And uh, Mitsuda said, okay, great. Hoping it would get him a raise. Uh, it, it didn't really. But uh, but he got the gig. He got to do uh, he got to do uh, Chrono Trigger, and um, obviously was an excellent choice, and has gone on to become you know just one of the most highly regarded uh, composers of Japanese RPG soundtracks uh, in just the uh, history of the genre. Uh, but uh, but yeah, he worked himself so hard that he ended up in the hospital with stomach ulcers uh, by the end of development and um, he has a really nice anecdote which I cover in Timeless uh, my article about the history of Chrono Trigger um, about how uh, he was allowed to leave the hospital for like the rap party um, for Chrono Trigger and um, you know he, he reminisces about you know uh, the experience of I guess a tradition f from that team was uh during the rap party, everybody watches the ending of the game together, and uh, and Mitsuda talked about uh, how he cried during that moment of watching the uh, the end of the game together, and that was uh, that's something that stuck with me about just the kind of passion and and drive that he has uh, for his work and for the products he works on. So we're coming up here on the first um, boss in the game, who um, isn't going to last very long. <laughs> he's uh even in the base game he's not very uh he's not very challenging um but certainly uh in a new game plus uh run through he uh he doesn't put up much of a fight uh one of the cool things which i'll show off now uh in chrono trigger if you're not familiar with it is all of the um Characters learn skills uh, kind of at a set rate. You need an, a certain amount of points uh, to learn the next skill, and so you, you learn them throughout the game. Uh, but depending upon your party configuration, uh, teams uh, your team members can team up for double and triple techniques. And so um, you can see here, like Mara or Luca and Chrono have Fire Whirl, Fire Sword, and Fire Sword Two. Uh, Frog and Chrono have X Strike, Sword Stream, and Spire. And together, the three of them can do Delta Storm. And so when you have a particular configuration of, of party members and they have the right skills, you unlock these double and triple techs, which are um, very strong. Um, and some of them in particular, um, like Falcon Hit, have um, some pretty good damage bonuses. So unlike other games, other Japanese RPGs, where it doesn't really, you know, like it's kind of more efficient to use single techs from two different um, characters. Uh, Chrono Trigger actually makes it worthwhile to, to dig into and, and utilize the, um, the double and triple techs. One of my favorite little things to do is uh, in these treasure chests, I can never remember which one, uh, is the Chancellor, the real Chancellor, because the Chancellor we uh, we had met previously was actually Yakra in disguise, that bad guy in disguise. Uh, the real one stuffed into one of these chests, which I think is hilarious, and you're supposed to open the chest and save him, but um, you can um, leave with Lean, uh, leaving him behind, and uh, <laughs> somehow he busts himself out, and I think that's funny. Um, Chrono Trigger is great. It has, you know, it, it deals with some fairly deep, th um, you know, deep themes um, about kind of intergenerational strife and uh, sacrifice for the greater good, not just personal good. Uh, but it's also um, full of great humor. And that's something that I think it brings over, um, not just from the Dragon Quest series. Also, Final Fantasy has a lot of good, good humor, but... Um, 
the way it kind of melds its its more serious elements with um with humor and levity i think is something that makes it really unique so we uh we saved the queen so we've uh theoretically resolved the time paradox um we need to go find our friend, Marl. Uh, Frog has just moped off uh, to his little hole, his hobbit hole, um, where he lives uh, because he blames himself for the queen getting um, kidnapped in the first place and not being able to save her. Uh, like I said, he's a, he can be a bit of a, uh, he's got a martyr complex, let's put it that way. <clears throat> so there we go. Uh, Marl is back. We're about 40 minutes into this stream. So I think what we're going to do is, um, I'll play for probably about five or 10 more minutes. We're going to get to a point where, um, where Chrono is, uh, thrown into jail and there's a safe spot there. And that's where we'll wrap up for today. So, uh, Marl and Luca and Chrono now are, um, kind of reconciling the fact that Marl is actually a princess. Um, Luca figured it out, of course. Uh, she's smart. And, uh, Marl is basically like, well, you know, I don't really want to be a princess. Golden handcuffs, all of that. Um, and that's one of the things I really love about Marl is that she is, um, She's very self-sacrificing. She comes from a place of immense privilege. She lives during this very idyllic um, time of peace. And yet she's still kind of driven to um, kind of seek out opportunity to do good. Um, and that really starts coming up um, probably in the next play session once, uh, once we get to the future. One of the things that, like, narratively Chrono Trigger does really well is um, it, it always puts like agency in the hands of the party uh so many games in the genre um have you you know chasing a bad guy or you've been forced out of your home village or you're on the run or whatever um but chrono trigger i think is really interesting because like the game could be over right now right like we've gone back in time we've saved marl uh we're going back to the future uh you know present time um, and that, that could kind of be it. Um, Chrono gets, does get, uh, arrested, which obviously drives the plot forward, um, a little bit. So that falls into the trope that I'm talking about. But at this point, um, you know, Marl and, and Luca and Chrono have, you know, made a few decisions. They've had their adventure and, um, and they kind of, keep choosing to pursue kind of goodness um when they can you know chrono and, and marl or chrono and luca you know choose to go kind of save the princess and restore uh time and that's um you know that's consequential for them um but at the same time like as they move forward there's several opportunities for them to exit the story and they don't they choose to kind of take the hard route um hey hey dude thanks for dropping by uh this has been uh this has been a fun stream Anybody, uh, you know, streaming, uh, watching the stream today and viewing today, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, um, I also do archive all of um, all of my streams over on YouTube as well. Um, so I'll have that pro up probably later today. Um, of course, if you're watching the stream now, um, or if you've been here the whole time, that that's great. Uh, if you're just joining me, that's going to be a way that you can kind of go back and uh, and catch the full stream. Um, so I appreciate you dropping by, Andrew. So there's a little bit of cause and effect coming up in the story, um, which does sort of go against what I was just saying in terms of like the characters always having agency. Um, 
and kind of pushing the plot forward. Uh, this is a point where that kind of flips on its head. Um, but basically what happened is we've gone back in time and uh, we solved the time paradox. But what we also did is create a situation where the Chancellor um, feels like he needs to um, create a stronger justice system, which then kind of comes in, and bites us in the butt in a, in a few minutes. Uh, this is a cute little thing you can do in Chrono Trigger. Every time you get a new party member, you can um, you can come introduce them to uh, you can come introduce them to to Chrono's mom, which is fun. How far can I get in this with just nuking things with lightning too? Um, I found with Luminaire, like if you just ride Luminaire with Chrono, um, you can get up to Giga Gaia without really breaking a sweat and basically um getting through every single battle just by using a single luminaire um after that like it doesn't become hard but you do um you do have to start kind of like using different skills and stuff and um and of course if you're using you know if you're playing a regular uh playthrough of the game there are different um different techniques that get you through battles faster than luminaire but uh luminaire with a gold stud is uh, is pretty strong uh, so here we are. Uh, the Chancellor wants to um, arrest Chrono because he says that he, uh, Chrono kidnapped Marl. Of course, that's uh, that's not what happened. Marl is actually the one with with agency that sort of like twisted Chrono's arm, uh, got herself in trouble, and then um, Chrono went after her to save her. But, and uh, here we go. This is one of my favorite set pieces in all of gaming. Um, it's hard to like, it's hard to overstate how incredible this courtroom scene was during the Super Nintendo era. Um, just the scale, the complexity, the detail, um, it's just amazing. Like when you think back to the beginning of the, the console, like kicking things off with Final Fantasy IV, um, which is just so simplistic compared to this and even like Final Fantasy V, um, so com simplistic uh, compared to this. And um, Final Fantasy VI had a few set pieces that were really impressive. There's a lake in the, the haunted forest with the, the ghost train that I find really, uh, really nice. Uh, but this set piece here is just out of this world. It's, it's crazy. Um, and it was scenes like this that actually, uh, yeah, exactly, coming from like tile-based maps, and Chrono Trigger is full of those, but um, but coming from a genre that's just generally full of tile-based um, maps that use a lot of repeating tiles uh, to something that's like, you know, bespoke and, and hand-drawn at this scale and with this level of complexity is is crazy. Um, and this was actually made possible by uh, bumping Chrono Trigger up to a, a larger cart uh, so that they had the space like in the memory um, to be able to do this. Oops, I might have just messed up the uh, the verdict by uh, by saying that. But uh... we're gonna get through the court scene. Um, and then we're going to get, uh, thrown in jail. And that's when I'm going to wrap this up. Maybe we might see, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll push through to, um, to the future. Um, depending on timing. So a lot of um, trying to get a, a not guilty verdict is uh, is more about what you don't do um, than what you do. Uh, at the at the Millennial Fair, there's a bunch of um, you know things that if you've played Japanese RPGs before on the system, like you know you go around, you find the guy's lunch, it restores your hit points, you grab it, um, you know you try to sell the pendant to um, the merchant. Um, you just try those things and, and Chrono Trigger sort of preys on the idea that, uh, 
that players will just automatically do some of these things and then it kind of punishes them later. So um, returning the little kitten to the girl was, um, you know, one of the kind of active things that I had to do. Um, and then I think there's also a, a little bit of randomness in it. I, I don't think you can guarantee, uh, you know, you can guarantee yourself to get a not guilty um, verdict, but I don't know if you can get guarantee yourself an uh, unanimous verdict um despite getting a not guilty verdict i'm still getting thrown in jail for three days for reasons uh which moral is not uh, too happy about so a lot of moral's journey throughout the game is kind of reconciling and coming to peace with you know, the responsibility that she has as a member of the royal family um, and finding out how that fits in with her. Um... <laughs> you always eat the old man's lunch. Yeah, he, he definitely a grump. Uh, but yeah, Marl's story is about, you know, how to reconcile her responsibilities as a uh, as a princess with sort of her desire to be out in the world with, the, you know, with the people that she, um, rules over. Um, and I think that Marl's story is, is one of the most kind of interesting and compelling, uh, in the game, especially when you kind of line it up with what happens with Shala, um, and Magus, Queen Zeal, um, later on in the game and, and kind of see, uh, see how that, uh, plays out. So normally at this point, um, I can, you know, drink this. If you get not guilty, uh, you get a little gift bag that has some uh, some items in it. Uh, ethers, just one. I'm gonna save. Uh, we are gonna go through uh, and get to the future. Uh, one of the fun things uh, there's, you know, again, Chrono Trigger is not loaded down with a lot of like options that actually matter like there's no real way to like like all outcomes are sort of predetermined uh but there are some some instances where you can do things in in different ways and um this uh dungeon 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 is um is one of them uh i can go knock on the the bars down there annoy the guards and then i fight them and then i break out that way um or i can just wait here uh, until the day of my execution, and um, I usually go th go the long route and uh, and bug the guards. But um, but for the stream today, it's kind of fun to uh, to show off this other um, method that maybe not a lot of people actually figured out uh, you could do uh, when they played the game originally. And so we're at the day of my execution, and um, here come the the guards. Obviously, Chrono does not get uh, executed uh, at this point. Uh, do I think the game's linearity was an asset or a flaw? Um, I think for the time, it was it was absolutely an asset. Um, I think that it has enough going on, enough complexity in terms of you know like nonlinearity or options, um, like narrative options, that it felt nonlinear at the time, um, especially the second half. Uh, which lined up really nicely with Final Fantasy VI's second half, which had the same like kind of non-linear uh, layout. Um, you know, I don't think you could have gotten away. I, I mean, I don't think you could have created or fit a game with like huge non-linearity on a Super Nintendo cart. Uh, so I think that like trying to get something that was really non-linear and like really kind of messed around with time travel mechanics. I just think you would have had an entirely different experience and had to lose a lot of what makes Chrono Trigger special. Um, I kind of like the the combination of like a fairly linear experience um, that kind of gives the perception of non-linearity. All right, so uh, Luca, you know, being Luca, uh, my favorite, uh, comes in and um, saves the day again. Uh, breaks her way into the dungeon and and saves me on uh 
my execution day. It's great. Luca's great. Oh, I want that treasure chest. So, um... About... You know, it shaves off a little bit of the dungeon. I don't actually know if that's faster than just going through the dungeon itself, but um, but it's fun. Um, here's somewhere where um, there is something you can miss, I think. And if I don't let Fritz go here, I think I lose access to him later on in the game. Um, that has nothing to do with time travel. That could be an any Japanese RPG. Um, but, um, but it's still a fun little uh, thing to do. One of the nice things about waiting for Luca to save you is that all of those guards are um, are already knocked out, and so that gives um, that shaves off a little bit of time, um, which is always good. Now this is going to be an instance where I completely get lost, even though I've played the game a million times. There we go. Uh, so that actually, you know, that shaves off quite a bit of that dungeon by waiting in your cell um, instead of instead of breaking out on your own. Uh, thank you, nice dodge. I've been watching Chrono Trigger speedruns, um, so I have picked up a few tricks um, to get past some uh, enemies. Those enemies with the shield are annoying because you can, um, you know, as long as their shield is up, you can't really damage them and they counterattack. So you have to wait for them to put their shields down, and, and even on a new game plus, um, I'm probably strong enough now to take them out even with their shield up. But uh, but it's uh, it's always nice being able to just dodge them like that. Fire can't hurt the uh, the dragon's head, which I forgot. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. In a first playthrough, it's definitely worth going through the whole dungeon. There's um, a load sword, I think, for Chrono. On the you crawl along, climb along the outer wall into a locked cell, and there's a, I think it's the load sword, um, and it's a it's a big upgrade. Um, for that time of the game, and if I remember correctly, you actually use it uh, for quite a while. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, my favorite things to do. I feel like today, uh, with uh, the Biden inauguration coming tomorrow, and this being the last day in uh, you know in office for uh, for the forty fifth president, being able to run uh, over uh, over top of this chancellor a few times just uh, you know. Uh, to get some giggles in is a nice way to honor uh, the transition that uh, is happening tomorrow. Uh, thank goodness. Oop, go down there. And so uh, we're escaping now, um, which is fun. And uh, I'm not going to fight. Obviously, not going to be fighting the guards. Chrono and Luca have a uh, have ethics and morals. Um, they just sort of like run around like a chicken with uh, their head cut off. Um, Which is funny to me. <laughs> the Chancellor has a good, uh, you know, he had a good heart, but uh, I don't think ramping up your your justice system uh, is a way to um, to grow a kingdom. I think. Uh, if the Chancellor had maybe picked up on some of Marl's compassion, uh, he would have uh, he would have helped his kingdom a lot more than uh, than his takeaway of trying to ramp up uh, ramp up a justice system. This is a nice little scene with the king. Um, you see, a, you know, a king who has all the power in the you know in his kingdom uh, at a loss. Uh, because he recognizes, I think, that he doesn't know how to give his daughter what she needs. Um, that he's not in a position to be able to do that. Um, you know, and as a, as a parent myself, I, I've 
take a lot out of that. It's really sweet. So we've been chased into a dead end, uh, but luckily, fortunately, conveniently, there is a, uh, a time gate. And so Luca has her time key, which she's going to use. Um, and this is going to send us uh, to a new location, new time. We don't know where. Uh, <laughs> Marl doesn't care. Uh, she doesn't realize how good she has it uh, in this sort of idyllic uh, 1000 AD. See you, Andrew. Thanks for dropping by. Um, I'm actually going to wrap up in a couple minutes. So, uh, you know, I hope you can join uh, next time. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, Marl doesn't really, you know, like she feels the weight of her golden handcuffs as as a princess, but uh, but her kingdom, Guardia, right now is is in a very good uh, very good place, uh, and where they end up on the other side of this time gate is not. Um, so this is when the game really kind of kicks into overdrive narratively. Like before we went into the past, there was this sort of fun little time paradox story uh, where the queen went missing. But now we get zapped forward into what is obviously a very, very different environment that looks very different than anywhere we've been before. And as we step outside, which we'll do, and then uh, before saving, we find a world that has been uh, destroyed. Um... And I think that's where Chrono Trigger really sort of gets, goes from, you know, like something that feels very traditional to something that's like, oh, hey, this is, you know, not just not just mixing science fiction and fantasy tropes, but now we're kind of getting into something that um, that narratively becomes a lot more interesting than what we've seen elsewhere kind of in the genre. Um but that um, is where I'm going to wrap up today. So we've got through the beginning of the game. We've uh, we've saved Morrow. We've solved a time paradox. And now we've been kicked forward um, into the future, about uh, 1,300 years, uh, to a world that's been destroyed by something that, uh, you know, that I know uh, what it is. But, uh, but the team doesn't know what it is. And this really kind of is when Morrow steps forward as... Uh, as a real narrative uh, driver. And uh, I like the part of the game coming up. So we'll cover that on the next time around. Um, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I'm going to uh, archive this on YouTube, um, but please also share it here on Twitch. Uh, follow me here on um, on uh, Twitch or uh, subscribe on YouTube. I'll... Uh, here, let me... There we go. Uh, I just popped the URL in... Um, chat and again i'm going to uh put another link to my piece uh on medium called timeless a history of chrono trigger uh it's exactly what it says on the box it's a big meaty long uh deep dive into chrono trigger into what kind of turned it into uh the success it was uh the story of the people who made it what it meant to me what it meant to the genre as a whole and um and I poured a lot of myself into it. I think it's one of the best things I've ever written. It means a lot to me. And if you enjoyed this stream, whether you're a fan of Chrono Trigger or you just came by to, to kind of see what was going on, I think you'll really like that piece. Um, I know I sure do. Uh, so thanks so much for uh, for joining me. If you want to keep up with, uh, with my work um, or what else I have going on, I've got a newsletter you can see right there, aiden.substack.com. It's called Astrolabe. You can also find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash a dribble of ink, A-D-R-I-B-B-L-E-O-F-I-N-K, um, where I tweet way too much, uh, and I tweet a lot about Chrono Trigger. Um, this is the first installment of this uh, streaming series. I'm going to be back um, again next Tuesday around lunchtime, Pacific time, um, to pick up uh, where we've left off, and we're going to get through this New Game uh, Plus playthrough over uh, 9, 10, 11 streams. So thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, I appreciate it. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know what you think of the stream. Let me know what you think of Chrono Trigger. And um, as always, um, you know, share this with friends. Share this with family. Share this with communities that you know you will love it. Uh, same with Timeless. You know, send that in an email. Uh, tweet at people. Uh, post it on Reddit. Um, that's, how, that's how writers and content creators like me... Um, find an audience and build an audience uh, so that we can keep doing this. I um, appreciate all the support and um, I'm so glad you could join me today. Thanks so much. All right. You have a good day. Bye guys.